Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. As usual, we're dissecting issues as well as proffering solutions. This week, we're pointing to truths right under our noses. I'll be kicking off the discussion by bringing to the forefront what we often ignore, hunger. I'm asking, when will our legislators channel the yearly budget to satisfy the stomach of many? Balahon seeks to enlighten us on the various forms of SARS besides the police force. Mm. That's interesting. Benga exposes the real frustration of a policeman as well as the hardship of police brutality. Hashtag NSAS now, he advocates. And in another light, our main man Chuka is back and is advocating for a less sexualized society. Last but not the least, Liberas sheds light on the chronicles of bad leadership and the reason for our protest today. So you can see from our lineup, we're not averse to rocking the boat in the interest of genuine stability. I'm up first, after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hunger, they say, makes a thief of any man. And I speak of hunger in the land. Each budget in Nigeria is christened that of 2020 was budget of sustaining growth and job creation, while that of 2021 is budget of economic recovery and resilience. It is disappointing that the allocation for the National Assembly in the 2021 budget has increased by 3 billion naira compared to previous years. In the midst of the poverty in the land, this is in addition to their already controversial bloated allowances and COVID-19 pandemic largesse? Should the executive and legislature be shielded from the reality of daily living in Nigeria today? I come to say there is hunger in the land. Twice in one day, I saw able-bodied young men with small trays full of colonot hawking along the road. I said to myself, this tray, how much is everything? Perhaps 3,000 naira, maybe less. The other day, a young man knocked spiritedly at my car window, urging me to buy popcorn. The look on his face when I said no, and the sigh of exasperation from him haunted me for days. There are now many young men on the streets begging for money. The executive and legislature should remember that when a hen perches on a rope, both of them are unsettled. Is it until young men begin to knock on your doors with guns to ask for food that you realize that there is hunger in the land? We have seen videos and images of the hashtag NSAS protest. Many of the youths, the majority of them, are unemployed 
and they're happy that there is free food to eat. Some of them have been moving from one location to the other to access protest rice. I come concert, no be, no be um, protest again. I don't chop. I chop with more chops. I don't drink beer. Small dog I don't think for me. <laughs> Life is good. I'll keep coming. I will come. It's an interesting dimension to stomach infrastructure. We blame our youth for being fixated with Big Brother when it actually provides some form of escapism for them. There is hunger in the land. Our youth are hungry. They don't have jobs. And on top of those, when they try to, as we say, hustle to make ends meet, they meet with profiling and police brutality. And the little they have is extorted. What is the justification for the three billion naira increase to federal lawmakers? That money could have been channeled into the needed reforms in education, health, and the police force. Money, 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 and more money in the pockets for the legislature. When are you really going to grow into the vibrant legislators that Nigerians desire? My advocacy is that both the lower and upper chamber should begin to account for their constituency funds and proactively audit employment into federal agencies and MDAs and pay more than lip service to providing employment for millions of Nigerian youth. Electric fences, armored vehicles, and security details haven't prevented ineffective leaders across the world from being targeted. The protests of the last two weeks should echo loudly in the ears and hearts of our leaders. Hashtag end SARS. Hashtag end SWAT. Hashtag end hunger. Hashtag <clears throat> equality. Hashtag <laughs> inequality. <laughs> equality for all. Mm. Hashtag peace in the land. Mm. Hashtag as many as hashtag. Many. That's that you can. But really, um, it is not just our legislators mm. so that we don't um, dissipate our energy in one direction while the others are feeding fat. The ministries, ministers, MDAs, parastatus agencies, they, are all, they all have their hands in this pie. So if you look at the budget clearly, you discover that the um, presidency, for example, we spend um, about how many billion to travel for next year. It's outrageous. Um, and then not to talk of, I think about 300 million for entertainment. You know, so in a, a land where people can hardly feed. So when you look at recurrent and um, the capital expenditure, it is, you know, always, uh, the parity is always very clear. And, and so that's why for me, we should put all of them in one pool and say, look, we can't sustain Nigeria like this. It's a cost you, of governance. If you say you want to serve, then come to serve. We shouldn't end up serving you. It's quite, quite unfortunate. I, I, I think the, the current uh, hashtag and SARS is just a metaphor for several other things that are wrong in the society. And one of it that you mentioned is the cost of governance. Mm -hmm. We don't earn, earn enough as a country. Nigeria is actually a poor country in terms of existing revenue levels. So it is amazing when we take these revenue levels and we share it in, in such a funny way that very few people have such a chunk and then the rest of the people have to struggle for the bits and pieces of, of what is left. And that is what we are seeing on the streets today. I, I hope the message is clear enough for the government. Yeah, I think, uh, liberals, you know, the legislators, why people aim at them is that we can see what is due to them very clearly. 200 yeah. million constituency um, allocation, 13.5 million salary, this and that. We should remove those things. There should be no constituency allowance. Yeah. True. They have no business with constituency projects. That's, that's, that's what I say. Their business is with the theoretical of their constituencies. That is doing things that, you know, laws, um, bringing things to our notice. But part of this, stuff. sorry, Chuka, yeah, yeah. part of this problem is caused by the rest of us. The pressure so, we put on them. As a lawmaker, not just the pressure, no, as a lawmaker, mm -hmm. nobody in your constituency will ask you how many laws, how many bills did you pass. The only thing they want to find out from you is what have you done for your people? <laughs> and, and so when you come, I'm telling you. So we need to correct. Yes. We need to, so we need when to we come back, when yes. they come back 
home. The yes. question is, what did you bring? What did you do? What project? Did you have been a lawmaker, you have been a senator, you have not done any project for your people. And, and so in some cases, you're lobbying the ministries and the ministers to attract projects, mm -hmm. which in some cases would have been approved, mm -hmm. or it's in the budget. Because here you know that in other climate, when once money is deemed, once money is budgeted, it's deemed appropriated. But here, money can be budgeted and not appropriated. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenges that we also need to channel our energy to. Sorry, mm -hmm. I... I yeah. But yeah, what about you? I think Chuka. Yeah. So, so, but see, liberal. Still, what I'm saying is, we know those figures should be removed. No, I agree. From them. I agree. I agree. And then, when you look at public servants that you are trying to criticize, those are simply contract inflators. That's what they are doing. Yeah. That's a different matter altogether from saying that a man has a constituency allowance, and right. you know, and all those sorts of things. Let's stop this. These no, guys agree, are. Agree these guys are supposed you. to be lawmakers. In, in England, that's what they do. That's what is constituency project. Well, Absolutely. A constituency we project is, parliamentarian <laughs> system. Yeah, you know, we should do things the correct that's way. That's been Chuka's advocacy. I, that's my advocacy then. too. Let's return to this parliamentary yes. system. It makes sense. Because more as a sense. parliamentarian, the president is from the parliament. Yes. The, the parliamentarians don't see him as distinct from yeah, them. Exactly. They talk to him. They so, yes. so, so our legislators, sorry, our legislators, <laughs> um, the, That's a Freudian slip. Sorry, <laughs> they, are, they are just on serious, um, serious. They are just on serious set of people. Yeah. Um, but I don't blame them. Trust me, I don't blame them. Um, now, uh, before I will blame you, I will blame myself. But now they seen. You say when we're growing up, my my mom used to say, um, when you chase a goat, and the goat gets to the end of the road, he will turn back. Yeah. And we thought it was a joke. I witnessed it. Mm. When we were in secondary school, mm. we actually practicalized it. Mm. And when the goat got to the end of the road, there was a fence nowhere again. Mm. He faced us. Mm. That's what we are seeing now. And trust me, more facing, more turning back of goats. Mm. I mean, you know what I mean. Mm. Essentially, mm. here yeah, they say the goats. Yeah, they say the goats will break the wall. But yeah. now, now, no, the goats. He go turn back. He go chase the, the, the people where they chase them. Come and chase you because you see so much hunger. If you know, if you know the kind of I have a text here. Last week, a woman sent a text to me. She said, I got your number online. Please help me. I, I am feeding with my four children from Dosbin now. Oh, Lord. And my four-month-old baby is about to die because there is no food. I thought it was one of these scammers. Mm. The following day, I sent someone to that location. Trust me. They brought me pictures. Mm. Life. Here in Nigeria, mm. not in Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's sad. And, and then the unfortunate part of it is that, like somebody said, the people that protested the reduction in the chicken, they were fed in the university. Mm. That the chicken was reduced from food <laughs> chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same chicken. And the same people, the same people that people. are asking you, why are you protesting mm. now yeah. Yeah. For, no chicken. for no chicken at all? <laughs> same Gentlemen, Mahatma Gandhi has said that there is enough on this planet for everyone's needs but not for everyone's greed. Balao speaks on the various forms of SARS right after the break.